He's at home at Microsoft Access and Visual Basic, uh, as well as the, an experienced developer with uh, Microsoft C Sharp in the .NET universe. And he's a speaker at multiple conferences about uh, code quality, automated testing, object-oriented programming. And um, he's definitely preaching what he, uh, he practices what he preaches. I'm going to talk about automated testing with Paul Rohotzka. Thank you for being here, Paul. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes. Um, I would like to, sh to start with asking you how did you come first into contact with Microsoft Access and um, how has that evolved? What kind of projects do you do today with Microsoft Access? Um, I think it was 20 years ago. At that time I said I was a student and there was a thing for, for 100 shillings at that time, so just a few bucks. Uh, there was the possibility from the university to get a, a CD with Microsoft Office 97 uh, at that time on it. And I bought it and I can remember, I think it was around Christmas when I started uh, using Microsoft Access without any prior knowledge. Just I want to make it better than I have it now in, in Word and Mail Merge. And immediately I stumbled across several things that seem now completely basic to me, but I didn't understand it at that time. Yeah. Yeah, so there was the thing about how to combine the first name and the last name and put the space in between. So it's, it's, it's pretty obvious for us how to do this. But at that time, I was in thinking in functions and in objects and in inheritance, and there is nothing like this. And I had to, to think in relations. I had to learn how to do it. And I made all this denormalization errors that a typical newbie yes. does and so. But it was a, a, a very, very interesting experience. And what really was interesting to me was to go into the VBA, of course, because when I started looking up things, how to do things that I didn't know how to do, uh, it was an, a simple thing for me to go into programming because, uh, because I, I liked programming at that time very much. And so I, I started to, to think, okay, how, how can I do the things that I'm doing in C and C++, how can I do this in Access, how can I do this in VBA? But of course, there are pretty similar things and concepts, but there are also many things that we by far do not have in VBA. Uh, yeah. But I really liked this, and or started liking the combination of, of what the designers give us. So how far can we get just by clicking and using property grids and using toolbar buttons and so, and where do we really have to start uh, coding? And this was an interesting journey because a few years later I, I got rather early, I think so in the early 2001-2002 mainframe, uh, I came into, into .NET programming when it was rather new. And, and also there I, I could take much of the C, C++ knowledge and transfer it to this part of the world, but I also could go and take these things back to the access world. Yeah. And when we started doing professional access databases at the time, uh, it really was a, a thing for me just not to give it out to the user in a, in a it just works state, but to have really good quality. So that was a very important thing for me to have good quality uh, on, on the thing that the user sees, but also on the thing that I as a developer, the we as yeah. a developer yeah, see I'm under the that. hood. So I, I didn't want to just cramp it out and, and let it go. I wanted to have it nicely so that I love to come back and to maintain it and rework it and improve on it. Yeah. Yes. So if we think uh, of today, now 20, 15 years later, I'm basically, for my day job, uh, I'm doing .NET development, yes. .NET and web development. Uh, but I still have uh, some projects and some very long-standing clients that I still support in their access needs and access databases. And I think it's still fun to do access at some time. At some time, if you are used to use, for example, Visual Studio and all the goodness that you have there, it can be sometimes really 
annoy you to go back to VBA. Absolutely, but on the other hand, yes. you really see all the, all the flexibility, all the forgiveness that VBA gives to us. And this is, is really a benefit and, the, and how quick you can put out the feature. You have been um, speaking about automated testing quite a lot. You have done so on the German IAK Access Entwickler Conference. And um, you are going to speak about the same topic tomorrow here at the Access DEFCON. So can you give us a short overview about what automated testing is and what benefits it has? Well, automated testing is, or testing, no matter if it is done manually or automated, uh, is a way to get a measure to assess the quality of the software. So testing by itself does not improve your software. It does not improve the quality of your software. If I say I found 10 bugs in your software and you say, I do, but I don't care, then you will not improve the software. So yes. if, if I do testing, I just can say, okay, I have the feeling this part of the application works fine in the way that we expect it to work, but I have seen these problems here. I have seen these problems here. And then we can talk about it. Then we can say, okay, this is a serious problem. This is really a thing that the user will, will make hate my software. So it's no way to get it out. We have to do something about it. There is a usability problem, but maybe it's not that serious. And there are other things that we can think about um, improving later on. So it's all about getting feedback on the quality. And if we do automated testing, what is of course a very important part of testing because if you think uh, about the uh, majority of, of software today, is these are not pocket calculators. So every sure, software, yeah. every piece of software, if you look in every, every hand app or every, every software that sits on our desktop computers is really a complicated thing. So you have so many features and so many things that you can combine together. So it's not really feasible to think to test everything just manually over the UI. So when you, when you want to be sure that you did not break anything by introducing some new feature or by changing back on the ones that you want to have pop up as something on the other side, yeah. you will have to test it. And if you can test it automated, it's just by a click of a button, you can get immediately feedback and immediately get some assessment about the quality of the software. Of course, you, you, you will not be that far that you say, okay, if I don't find any problems with my automated tests, then I'm pretty sure my application is completely fine. No, because it's not possible to test everything. It's sure, not possible yeah. to test everything manually and it is not possible to test anything, uh, to test everything uh, automated. But it is way more uh, feasible and way, way easier to say, to test hundreds of cases for the tr critical parts of your software in a few seconds or maybe minutes. And if you would click it through via the user interface, it maybe would take you hours and you would even make errors there. Of course, and so, yes. And, and this is tedious and so you wouldn't do it. You would maybe do it once for a few months or one, once in a half a year. And, and then you forget about several things. So all your testing process would be very cumbersome and you, you always would have to think about is this feedback that I get, I get from the software after I clicked and I did something, is this really the thing that I expected? So is it good? Is it okay? Or is that something that couldn't, should not be like this? Should it be something different? And one part of automated test is that you have to define what is the expected outcome. And then a computer is completely sufficient to say, is the thing that really happened and the thing that you said me to expect, is it the same or is it not? Now, automated testing is um, widely used in, in the general developer world, world, particularly in the Java and c .net world. But hardly anyone is using that in, in the Access VBA context. What is the reason for that, that Access and VBA developer don't do much automated mm. testing? I think that's, that's really a good question because, um, because I, I think there are several reasons why this is the thing. Uh, one thing is you have to know about some things 
to be able to think about it if you want to use it, if you want to to leverage it for your needs or if you don't. So, and, and this is the problem, typical access databases often grow out of uh, something a power user starts doing, of something that, uh, of, of some business need of uh, maybe not typically trained person does. And so maybe those people don't even know that there is a thing as automated testing. So when, when I tell my, my non-technical relatives, for example, that I'm, I'm doing talk about software testing, and so one said, oh, software is tested? I didn't know that. <laughs> so so there, are really, yeah. th there is really, from the, from the non-tech people, a, a complete misunderstanding or non-understanding of how the process of software development works. And so I, I think one thing is, is knowledge and training. Do you know it? Do you think it brings something for you, it has a value for you, then you will maybe at least try it. Yeah. It could be that you say, okay, it's, it's too tedious for me and I don't want to use it and it doesn't give me that much benefit that but you would have the possibility to try it. And I think the, the second uh, reason is why it is not widely used in the access uh, community is if you think of, of an access database, how far can you go without touching any code? You can go really far. So if you if think you, you start up access and you immediately, the first thing after you, you said, okay, I want to have database one XDB, you see a complete user interface of a table. Yeah. So you did nothing. And you have already the possibility to enter some data and it gets stored in a database. So immediately you have the backend and you have some user interface without doing anything. Of course, yeah. we don't stop there. Then we, we make the queries, we make the forms, we make the reports and so. And we have very, very many possibilities to change and to tweak this. We have all the goodness on top of the, the toolbars and the, and the ribbons and the designers and the wizards and the builders and stuff. And you can do so much and your application will com look completely different from my application. And yeah. if we want, we do not have to see any piece of code at that time and really, really got far. So there is no, uh, no obvious hook where we can, we, we can, we can sh uh, look into and say, okay, and here is the data coming by and I want to check it before it goes to the database. And here comes the data back from the database and I want to check it before I show it to the user interface. Yes. That does not exist in a typical access application. Also, you, uh, the way you do not see the data flow, you also do not see uh, if you don't go into the programming, in, uh, you don't see the, the clicking. If you use, if you select uh, from the navigation bar uh, a form, it just goes up and it is here, and it's fine, yes. and that's completely great, of course. But there is no obvious thing that you would touch, take out and test. So the thing, single thing that uh, you can do if you have a, a monolithic uh, access application is to test it from the outset. You can set up data in the backend somehow, probably through the user interface. You can observe the data through the user interface. You can interact via the user interface and see what happens. Yes. And then you, as I said before, you can say, okay, is this good or is this not good what I see? And so I, I think as soon as you're starting doing VBA programming, of course, the, the story gets a little bit different because then some other parts of uh, complexity come in. The complexity in a designer only access application lies in the in the setting of parameters, in the yeah. clicking of buttons, in the choosing of fonts and colors and, and dragging controls around and stuff and, and using the right control source and row source in the controls and stuff. Sure. But, so that's, that's the thing. But then the complexity comes into the VBA code. You add VBA code to have business rule validations, you want to yes. do batch processing, you want to trigger some functionality that Access has but does not provide you uh, with a user interface to export to a CSV file, for example. You, you want to, uh, to access things that are not really in the, in the focus of Access as a product. So, for example, if you want to get data from a web service, it's completely doable but not without programming. So, yeah. these are the things that where you have to really go into the code, maybe use some other libraries and, and do yourself programming and that's the part where you start introducing bugs typically or where the risk to introduce bugs is, is rather high. And so I think if people 
really start um, putting out large bodies of code and maintaining it over months and years, they will come to the point where they don't have all the code in their head anymore. Yeah, that's impossible. And even if, you, if you're working with other people together, you don't know exactly what, what he did and you don't know exactly what she did. So, so you have to have some safety net that says, okay, is there some obvious problem? Or do we have, can we have a good feeling that we didn't break anything? Yeah. And so I think that is the part where if you know about, and then we are back in the, uh, the topic before, if you know about that there is something like automated testing, you might remember it and say, okay, so we had this problem, we are not really sure if we are still have a working product or if it's maybe broken on a, a little bit or users even report it, we introduced a bug, we broke something that worked before and we now want to do something about it and automated testing can be a measure for it so that you have a, a harness that can help you stabilize and keep the thing that used to work in a good condition and also if you're thinking about test-driven development and test first that even helps you to to good uh, put good code out in the first place Thank you very much for this interview okay. and uh, yeah, it's my pleasure having you. Okay, thank you for having me.